Good morning, everyone. Uh, I do apologize for the couple of minutes being late. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with the microphone when testing, but um, hopefully we are live now and hopefully everything goes smoothly from here on out. Good morning and welcome. My name is Omar McAdam and I am here with the Faith Online team to give you a demo of our live streaming kit as well as the platform what you can expect to receive if you do order a kit and what you can expect to do if you sign up to the platform and how it can help you and your church to engage with your congregation uh, and increase your uh, visibility and increase your digital worship services. So um, a good morning to those of you who are here. Um, just looking through the list right now, if you are here, uh, feel free to say hello, say good morning. Um, let me know where you're from. Let me know how you found out about us. Um, we, of course, also have my colleague uh, Talia uh, in the room here who can assist you with any specific questions that you may have um, regarding the sales process or regarding the accounts, etc. cetera. Um, but welcome. It is a glorious Thursday morning. Um, and let us start off um, by just giving you a very quick overview uh, of who I am and what kind of questions you can uh, ask me. So uh, my name is Omar McAdam um, and for the last 15, just over 15 years, I have been involved with live streaming. Um, not what you would typically find if you search for live streaming on Google, but uh, actually live streaming for events and worship services. So uh, very specific to the same type of uh, live streaming for churches. Uh, and again, lots of the worship services over the years, um, lots of digital faith events. And so my experience is very specific um, that then you could ask questions as well. This is an open platform. This is all live. So good morning, Mary. Uh, good morning, uh, Jean uh, from Warwickshire. Um, if you have any questions at any point regarding the kit uh, or the platform, or even just something about your church and how you have things right now, feel free to just drop them in there. Um, this is a webinar to help you understand what is possible uh, in terms of digital worship for your church so that um, we can as we said earlier, better connect with your congregation. Um, I'm gonna move at a fairly reasonable pace. We do have an hour and I like to respect everybody's time and I thank you again for turning up today. Um, so let's get on with it. Um, if we switch over to, just bringing this into the right frame here. If we switch over to here, you can see my laptop in the background there. Um, and then you can see everything that you get in the live streaming kit. Um, the rubber duck is not included, um, but if you do really want one, you can request it and ensure that the salesperson is aware that you want a rubber duck and we will do our best to find one and ship it out to you. Um, but this, these here, as well as just behind me here, uh, the tripod is the fundamentals of our live streaming kit. And what it allows you to do is to live stream from anywhere. And it doesn't require any kind of installation. It doesn't require uh, any cabling. It doesn't require any changes to your current system. And it's designed to work with you and grow with you in your church um, over the coming years. Again, this kit has been put together through years upon years upon years of experience in doing these exact type of live streams. Um, and speaking with a lot of industry experts as well, they are always surprised um, at the capabilities of this kit. And most of them just turned around and outright said, this is the best value for money thing since sliced bread. Um, but these are the fundamentals uh, of the kit. Uh, the star of the show is the Mevo camera. I'm sorry, it's a little bit dusty there. Um, it is the Mevo camera. So this here is a full HD wireless camera. Um, and it allows you to live stream from anywhere. Because it's completely wireless, no cables are needed. 
It can use the Wi-Fi in your church, or if you don't have Wi-Fi in your church or it's not strong enough, you can also use a 4G connection on your phone and you can still live stream. Therefore, theoretically, and actually in practice as well, anywhere you have a 4G internet connection, whether it's in the middle of the forest, whether it's in a field, whether it's at the local uh, village fair, anywhere you have internet, you can live stream. Um, and it's absolutely mobile and it takes less than two minutes to get things set up. And we will do a little test a little bit later on uh, where we start a stopwatch and we see how long it takes to unpack everything, switch it on and go live. So this is the star of the show. It's a full HD wireless camera. We also include these two um, wireless audio devices. One is a transmitter and one is the receiver. And what's great about these guys is that they are small and compact, but the transmitter has a, and I'm gonna switch over to this camera for here. The transmitter has a microphone built in to it this allows you to just click on the transmitter for an impromptu stream here. It can also accept a lavalier mic, which is one thing, unfortunately the cats really enjoy to play with the kit. Um, so you could plug in a lavalier mic, which we also include in the kit. Uh, and then you could have, like I have here, a lavalier clipped on. Um, or you can also hook it up to your mixing desk. Um, and then you can get the audio output from your mixing desk and you can send that across on your streams. Uh, Mary is saying 4G can be expensive. That is true, 4G can be expensive. However, there are dedicated plans uh, which would allow you to stream anywhere up to kind of 20, 30 hours per month. So if you think about that, that's one hour of streaming every day and they will come in at less than 30, 40 pounds um, Per month, so it's really depending on how exactly how exactly you go and how you do it. Uh, some mobile phone contracts have unlimited 4G internet, um, and then obviously those you could use and stream as much as you wish without any additional costs. But there are dedicated 4G plans as well. So we have worked with multiple churches who um, are based in an area where there's barely broadband connection. And with them, we have uh, guided them through the process of choosing the right 4G provider, the right devices to ensure that they have good, stable 4G. Uh, and they are paying, uh, one of them is currently paying 30 pounds per month because they managed to get some deal from EE. So again, it doesn't have to be so expensive. And in many cases, it's actually better than sitting there waiting for BT to come after 10 years to upgrade your current line because they say, yep, we're gonna be doing it soon, but we can't tell you when. Um, so it would work as, an, uh, as a great stopgap, uh, uh, something that you could use to get started immediately. You just need to go up to one of the mobile phone shops, get the SIM card, get one of the small modem devices, which cost, which cost about 30 or 40 pounds, and you could live stream from anywhere with a little pocket uh, 4G device, or again, on your mobile phone, if you have a data plan, then that would also be included there as well. Um, so, we said that the transmitter can be plugged into your audio mixing desk. And what this will do then is that when you come to stream, anything which goes out over your standard audio system, your PA system in the church, can also be transmitted on the stream. This means then that you don't need to wear a separate microphone, you don't need to have multiple additional microphones for everybody who wants to listen in, or everybody, sorry, who wants to uh, speak, or uh, maybe you have a musician or something, and you just take the good audio um, from there. Um, we do include, uh, as well, if I go back to Mr. Overhead Camera here, we include a genuine, and the reason why I emphasize on this is because there are a significant number of fakes in the market, a genuine SanDisk um, micro SD card. It's 128 gigabytes, and it will allow you to record and store approximately 13 hours worth of video uh, on the memory card. Um, and then we also include this little handy uh, nifty system. This is a uh, phone clip, and if I find my phone here, so it will allow you to have your phone uh, and then you would screw your phone in on one side here. 
like so. And then you screw the camera in on the other side here, doing this at a bit of an awkward angle. And then if you did want to just um, record and film yourself, then you have a nice, great big display, which can show you um, if the phone didn't restart, uh, which could show you then yourself as you are filming. Just make sure you know you have the framing right, etc. Also, it's a handy little phone clip. Uh, it has a little stand on the back that you can use uh, to prop it up somewhere uh, on a desk or something. Um, and this is also included in the kit. So we build the kit up to be very flexible and it's designed to work with you in any way you want. Um, so that is the fundamentals of this uh, live streaming kit. And for some reason, every time I come to do a webinar, people like to call me. Um, so I do apologize if you heard the ringing in the background there. Um, now, let's, uh, let's talk about the tripod who is up behind me. So allow me to just reach over and bring it into frame. Um, we include a ball head. And what a ball head is, is one of these guys. It allows you to have a certain level of flexibility in adjusting the camera once it's mounted on the tripod. So if I bring the tripod carefully uh, down here, I have to move the, screen, the chair back, sorry. Let's try and do this again. Um, so the tripod is a aluminum and magnesium compound. And what that means is that it's very light and very strong. It doesn't have any complicated systems. It's not kind of big and bulky. And when it's folded up, it's a little bit over 50 uh, centimeters. Um, but it's nice, compact, lightweight, but it's very, very sturdy. And in contrast to a traditional video tripod, this tripod actually extends from the base. So if you have here, look here, this, these are the legs. This is the maximum height of the legs. So the legs will never go higher than this. And what this allows you to do is to extend the rest of the tripod up and rather than with traditional video tripods where you have three big legs coming all the way down, and they look quite obtrusive and they take up a lot of space, etc. This one allows you to have a much smaller footprint, but still get the same flexibility and still get great viewing angles um, for the camera, but also for anyone who may happen to be just behind the camera. Um, so the ball head lives on top of the camera here. And then of course, the camera lives on top of the ball head. Um, and as I mentioned, the ball head gives you flexibility of, you can then undo the, the, the uh, thread on the ball head and you can position the camera however you wish, you know, angle it down, angle it a little bit more up, kind of tilt it if the tripod is on uneven ground, and then you can just tighten it down and that's it. And this here is how uh, obtrusive or non-obtrusive, unobtrusive the camera is. So I am sitting almost directly behind the camera, yet I can still see you and you can still see me and I have a very clear, perfect vision. So by doing this, you can get the camera into positions or locations that give a much more intimate feeling um, to the people watching online. A lot of traditional live streaming kits for churches, they have the cameras mounted really high up, sometimes even on the ceiling, and when you watch them, it always looks a little bit like it's a kind of bird's eye view. Um, and it's not so relatable. With digital worship, you want to allow people to experience the church digitally, i.e. through live streaming, in a way that they are familiar with. So what that means is that to get the best, uh, the warmest view, the angles, you should try and get the camera positioned somewhere where somebody would traditionally sit to watch or a view that somebody would have as if they were there in the church. And this camera definitely allows you to do that because again, of how unobtrusive it is. I mean, if I put it there, uh, if anyone wanted to take a screenshot, this could actually just be my nose. Um, but moving on from that, um, the camera is one of the simplest things uh, ever to use. On the front, there is a little light at the bottom here. This is a status light. And just to simplify this again, I'm gonna take it off of the tripod. And by the way, if you have any questions at any point, just feel free to shout them out. Um, 
If you're already using a camera and you're wondering what this can do that that can't, uh, let me know. And if your camera is already significantly or is already great, um, but you want some tips on how to in increase the quality, again, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. So the, um, sorry, my wife has burnt something in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so here is the front of the camera. There's a status light, uh, as we said, and on the top here are three microphones. They are reasonable. They are not the best microphones in the world, but they are great for if you do forget to charge the other microphones, they will still provide a reasonable audio. Um, and then on the back here, there is a power button. There are um, some battery indicator lights. There is the audio input. There is the charging port. And then at the bottom here is the micro SD card, uh, as we said, where you can then record uh, everything onto the micro SD card. Um, switching on the camera is as simple as pressing and holding the power button and then you will see the lights will start dancing and they are the battery indicators as well. So there's four lights and each one is equivalent to approximately 25% battery. Um, what this means then is that just by quickly switching on the device at a glance you know approximately how long is left in the battery and each battery will do approximately five and a half hours of full HD live stream. Um, now, one thing which I didn't show in the kit, only because um, it gets a little bit messy on my desk, is um, the charging cables. Everything in this kit charges from one single type of cable, and that is a um, USB Type-C cable. And we include a multi-charger, which is one simple, in Blue Peter style. Here's one I prepared earlier. So one simple input, i.e. it takes up one plug, and it will give out five different uh, cables, allowing you just to create almost a charging station whereby uh, everything lives and everything can be charged in one place. Now the camera started up, and as you can see on the back, I have a full battery indicated by the four lights there. So let's actually do a little bit of a demo of the software. Um, the Mevo camera can be controlled with just a smartphone. There is a dedicated app for it. Uh, so I'm going to put this over here, and in the interest of keeping some space, I'm going to turn this around, and as you see in the background there, there's my other duck assistant. Uh, they are very handy, uh, loyal uh, assistants there. I'm just going to point the camera at the duck, so it's just off frame there. Um, and then we can dive into the software, because the software is actually going to be um, a very interesting thing. You can, if you do want multiple cameras, or if you already have a um, media system, uh, projections, TVs, or something in your church, you can also connect up the camera with a computer and integrate it with uh, a lot of other systems. It is very, very flexible. It doesn't have to be used via the phone, but it gives you that possibility of not needing any additional hardware or not needing anything extra. So if we come over to the phone now, uh, as you can see, I have uh, very quickly, I can see which Wi-Fi network it's connected to. My local Wi-Fi network is called Mr. Techie, uh, since I am a techie. Um, battery level is 100%, and I see the serial number of the camera, and I can tap connect. Uh, it's telling me that there is a firmware update. Uh, I'm going to select yes, update now, um, and we'll see how long this takes. So even if there is a firmware update, this shouldn't add more than a minute onto your uh, preparation times, and this should be very quick and very uh, fast to do. I don't know what this firmware update is. I was just using the camera yesterday, so this probably came out overnight. But there is also always the option to skip the firmware update, so you don't have to update there and then. Um, I'm just doing it because, why not? I might as well show you the latest software, especially if there's any additional features that have been added in. Um, also via the app, this is where you can um, control whether the, phone, whether the camera is connected to Wi-Fi or whether it's connected to a 4G connection. Um, Gene is asking, if we want to piggyback on existing systems, is there a minimum spec for the laptop? Um, 
do you have a separate proje projection system with software such as Easy Worship or something like that? Or um, do you have other cameras? Or are you looking for just one camera, multiple cameras? Um, there's a few things that go into that. Um, I would say a recent laptop uh, within the last few years, last couple of years, should be more than capable of handling it. Um, but again, it depends on how many inputs will be coming in. So as an example, if you have a uh, the projection system, that could be one input. This camera could be a second input, but perhaps you want a third camera, or perhaps you want to bring in uh, the screen of another device. Um, each one of these kind of adds on to the processing power needed. Um, if you already have a laptop, actually, Gene, you can uh, let me know what the laptop is, and I will do my best to answer right here, there, and then if it's the right thing. Um, but if not, then we can always help you out with that. Um, so as you heard, there's a few beeps, which is the Mevo uh, starting up. And as you can see on my screen, it says the Mevo is now restarting. Please wait. We are waiting, Mevo. Um, yeah, so for one customer which we had, um, they had quite a complicated system in the sense that they wanted multiple cameras as well as bringing in the, um, the projection system using a piece of software called Easy Worship. And they tried to run it on a uh, eight-year-old MacBook. And unfortunately, that wasn't powerful enough. Uh, it did lead to some stuttering. It did lead to some uh, small issues. Um, so they are currently sourcing um, a desktop computer, a kind of 300 pound desktop computer to work on this for them. Uh, and they prefer desktops rather than laptops. Um, so there we go. Well, this is the app. Welcome to the app. You are still on my phone, uh, as we can see here. Um, first things first. Um, in the upper right-hand corner there, we can see the output of the camera. This is whatever would be broadcast live. Um, so by simply uh, tapping on the upper right, we can see what is broadcast live. Uh, if we tap on the screen, the camera does have a certain level of digital zoom. Now, if you are going to be streaming in full HD, we recommend um, some different uh, settings which will not zoom in as much just to maintain the high level of um, just to maintain the high level of quality. Uh, but if you are going to stream in 720p, you can zoom in even more. Uh, Mary Jones is saying we have three cameras and two laptops in our system, so can do picture in picture. Would your camera be able to stream picture in picture or text and picture? Um, it seems like you already have quite a quite a good reasonable setup there, Mary. Um, you can take the, the output of this camera and send it through to whichever system you currently have. It is fully compatible with all of the uh, industry standards in terms of um, transmitting video, etc. cetera. Um, but the, the camera here does not do picture in picture since it's only one camera with one input um, and text on picture or things like that. That is where then we recommend doing the more advanced setup, which is sending the camera feed to a computer, letting the computer do the processing, and then the computer can do the upload, uh, et cetera. Uh, but if you do decide to do that, you always do still have the flexibility of a camera that you can take anywhere and you don't always need to rely on, um, on using a computer to do it. Uh, so again, if you wanted to, for example, take it home or you have uh, an event going on in another building, you just pick up the camera, carry it, switch on your phone, and then you'd be able to go live uh, like that. And then when it comes to the normal Sunday service, you take the camera back to the main hall, you switch it on, it connects back with everything else, and then you can do all your picture in picture and uh, everything else that you need there. Um, so uh, simply by um, tapping, uh, you can zoom in very quickly. And this is also applicable if you're using a software or laptop to broadcast. You can still use the app on your phone to zoom in and zoom out and uh, make other modifications. Um, you can also, if you tap and hold, you can save static shots. So maybe that one's not so interesting. So I'm going to save a static shot of my books. I'm going to save a static shot of the lion up above. Um, and then now I can instantly tap 
and move between each of the static shots. Now, again, I have this camera set up for 720p, so the zoom in is slightly more than if it was full HD, but even in full HD, you can still get a reasonable amount of zoom. Um, and there's also a different view for working with the camera, which is whereby it just shows the static shots that I have. And simply by tapping on them, uh, I can select which one goes out live. And as you can see, the one which is currently set as the output is uh, surrounded with a blue rectangle. And when you are live, that blue rectangle um, goes red. Uh, Mary saying, thank you. You're very welcome, Mary. Um, if you do have any other questions, um, I love working on the integrations part. Um, I'm always keen to find new ways to get things connected up and to get things hooked up to different systems. Um, and again, as I said, we have lots of churches now working, which is it's kind of just adding on to what they already have rather than replacing it and causing um, issues or additional costs. Um, back to the software then. Um, there are some great features. If I tap the three uh, buttons, you know, the three dots in the bottom left hand corner, there is a feature called um, Auto uh, Camera Assistant, uh, which is the symbol of an I with an A in it. And this has a uh, mode called Autopilot. And what Autopilot does is that Autopilot automatically goes through the static shots that you've saved, and it will try to detect where there is motion. So if I come up here, and then if I come up, to Mr. Lion from the top, if I can get my hand in the frame, there we go. Um, it's not the smartest thing in the world, uh, and it's not, it will never be as good as a human, but it does try to detect where there is motion, and it will try to uh, switch to the motion um, when it detects it. So this is an interesting feature. Uh, it allows you basically to set up your shots and then just roll through them in a semi-automated way. Um, there is also a mode called Live Follow. And to do that, I will have to position the camera about here. Um, and on my face, it shows a uh, circle. So if I tap on the circle, and then now I move around, if we tap the output window, you can see that the camera is tracking me and it's following me around. This is great if you have somebody um, who uh, moves a lot when they are speaking. Um, then this is a great way to kind of uh, be able to track them without having uh, too much headache or problems. Um, other than that, there's some small minor adjustments um, such as, uh, look, you can just go back to the full screen here. Uh, there is a, some customization in terms of changing how the camera feed looks and feels. So if you have a very bright church, you could modify this if you have uh, big glass windows kind of ahead of the camera where usually most cameras would kind of get blown out and all people see is just this bright light. You can modify that as well. Uh, when you're outdoors as well, it will automatically change the exposure. It will change some of the settings. Uh, and there's a lot of customization here to ensure that you always get a good, uh, clean uh, feel. Um, there are some predefined kind of effects as it would be. So this is... Uh, if you wanted to record something for a special event, uh, for example, again, you can always record with the camera. It's not just a streaming camera. Um, you could get this kind of like old uh, looking effect, uh, which would be interesting and uh, great. Uh, you can also go for really vivid colors. Uh, for example, if you have a garden and it's the spring and the flowers have come out, you could switch over to vivid and then it would show even brighter colors. Um, and these are all things that are built into the camera and built into the app. So it allows quite a large level uh, of adjustment and quite a large level of flexibility. Um, just going through here, okay. Um, this is the live streaming kit. Um, it does allow you to go, and for this, I need to remove myself. Sounds a bit strange, but um, you can always just record to the SD card. Um, you can stream directly to Facebook, which requires you to sign in with your Facebook account, um, or you can stream to YouTube or various other things, or of course, then you can stream to uh, Faith Online. And what Faith Online allows you to do is that it will uh, stream to YouTube, it will stream to Facebook, and it will stream down a phone line. 
uh, absolutely simultaneously without any input from you. So once you have the system configured and set up, you never need to log into Facebook or YouTube to set up your live streams again. We handle everything, we create the events, we add in the descriptions, we do everything for you. And then just by going live to uh, Faith Online, we will restream to YouTube, Facebook, and the phone line. And the phone line is a very interesting thing because that's quite a unique thing in the world of live stream. And um, we noticed uh, that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, there were a lot of members of congregation who couldn't go to church. And a lot of churches started to uh, stream to Facebook. But there's a lot of members of congregation who maybe don't use Facebook or they don't have access to the internet, or they're not so um, tech savvy uh, to be able to kind of navigate around things. And they are more familiar with a phone system. So our phone service uh, operates in the same way as a normal phone menu or phone IVR system, uh, in the fact that you get your own dedicated phone number in your own local area code, again, so that when your congregation calls, the call you know the calls are mostly free, since most uh, phone plans include at least some free minutes to local phone numbers, um, and then they can hear the live stream. They won't see it, but they will still hear the audio feed of the live stream. Uh, and it's not just for live. Um, you can also record and put as many different messages uh, as you want on there, uh, and you can kind of adapt it to however you wish and however you want. Um, you get nine total options. And some churches are currently doing a prayer of the day or a thought of the week uh, or sharing a favorite passage uh, of the week. Um, and they are doing various different recordings. Each recording can be up to 30 minutes long. And you have the possibility of having nine of those live at any time. Um, a lot of churches actually right now are using it to update on their COVID situation. Is the church open or closed? Uh, what is the current capacity? How long do you need to uh, arrive before the service to be able to get in? Who do you contact if you want to register? Um, and so there's a lot of additional benefits that then allows you to just very easily customize the system to work with you and your congregation. And to show you all of that, um, we're going to switch over now to the browser. So um, this is the Faith Online system. Uh, and I'm going to move my chair ever so slightly. There we go. Um, so this is the Faith Online system. And um, as you can see, you can see a history of who called, how many calls, what people listen to, uh, and how things uh, have been going in your church. Um, we are updating the dashboard now to also show the statistics for your live streams. Um, but within the phone option here, you can add a welcome message. So I'm gonna tick add, I'm going to click on next. Uh, I'm going to give a name of this is our welcome. Next. And hopefully, if everything goes right, you should still all be able to hear me, which is perfect. So I'm going to tap on record. Hello and welcome to this demo for a church welcome message. And that's it. And then if you play, you will be able to hear the audio back. And then you can choose whether you want to record it again or save it. So that's our welcome message put in there. And it'll take a couple of seconds to process. Uh, and once the welcome message has been processed, then we can come in here, add a new phone menu option. I'm going to select here and set this here as opening hours. Just to show you that at the back, if you come down, extension number is one. So I gave it a name of opening hours, extension number is one. And then it's asking me to record a message for opening hours, press one. To hear about our opening hours in current COVID situation, please press one. So now then when somebody dials in, they will hear this voice prompt, and then I can record audio as the message that they will hear once they press one. We are currently open 24 seven. The doors are always open. If they are locked, please knock and somebody will open it for you. Due to the current COVID situation, however, we can only have two people in the church at any one time. Therefore, you may be asked to wait outside before you are allowed in. So something just as simple as that allows your congregation to stay connected with you and get the updates and be able to plan uh, their days and be able to plan their worship. Um, rather than kind of 
just sitting at home being, well, it's locked down, the church is probably closed, I'm not going to go this week or next week or the week after because I think the church is closed. Um, so this way then people can always stay up to date and people can call back in the number every week if they want and get the latest opening and closing times, uh, etc. Um, I'm also going to add another option now and I'm going to call this here live service. I'm going to leave it as option two. To listen to a live service or the previous recording, please press two. And something that's very interesting with our system is that if you live stream to the phone line, once the live stream is over, is over, we take that audio and we save it to that phone menu option. So if, for example, I stream to this menu option now, then once when it's live, people will hear it as it's happening. And when it's over, it will start to play from the beginning of that service. This audio here will be replaced after the first time that I go live. And so then I'm gonna save this here. And that's the basics, that's the fundamentals of the phone system. Again, you can have up to nine different options. You can record up to 30 minutes for each one. You can also just upload audio files or even you can upload a video file and we will extract the audio from that video file and we will put that on the phone uh, option there. Um, as you can see, you do have a media folder uh, where you can upload as many files as you want within the uh, space allocated on your plan. So for example, right now, this account is on the free plan and therefore it has 10 gigabytes of storage. But if you go up to the live streaming plan, it will include, uh, it will include, I believe it's 100 gigabytes. Uh, let's see here. I believe it's 100 gigabytes. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up here. Ah, there we go, 100 gigabytes of media storage. If I slow down with my scrolling, I might find it. Um, so then you can upload audio files, you can upload video files, and then you can um, set them as phone menu options. Uh, and every live stream is also recorded here as well. Uh, another great feature about the cameras is that you can configure them that every time you go live, that they also record locally to the SD card. And what that means is that if the internet does happen to go down at any point, uh, that there will always be a local recording that you can then later on take and upload uh, as you need. Um, so how do we set up live streams? Well, within Faith Online, we have a system called the um, event system, uh, and we call it stream. So here, this is where you have a calendar and you can create new events on your calendar. Every organization gets a public page uh, where you can share it uh, on Facebook, you can put a link to it on your website, and that public page will show people this exact calendar and from there they can see all of your up and coming um, events and they can see all of your up and coming um, streams or any other activities that you have. So I'm gonna create a new event here. I'm gonna call this here the uh, Thursday demo webinar service. And I'm gonna leave it set for today, which is Thursday. Uh, the start time is 10.45 a.m. So this, we'll set this to 10.50 a.m. and we'll let it end at 11.50. Now I'm gonna give it an event description. Uh, this is the event description and it can have as much or as little text as you want. You can even do multiple lines or add in bold text. Now, at the bottom here, there are two different settings. You can have private events. And private events, basically, um, they are published to YouTube, but they are marked as unlisted. And this means then that if you have something such as a wedding or a funeral or a baptism or something that you don't want everyone in the world to see, you can set this as a private event and then you can share the link with the family uh, or with the people who are taking part in that event. This is great because it allows you to use the same live streaming kit without changing any configuration at all. 
You don't change anything at all on the cameras. All you do is that when you're creating the event, you just tick, it's a private event, and we handle everything on your behalf. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna leave it as a public event. Likewise, there's another setting here, start at event time or start with signal. Starting at event time means that if I go live right now at 10.42, only at 10.50 will YouTube, Facebook, and whoever else get my stream um, because I want to be able to go live and I know that exactly 10.50, that's when things go live. Or for some churches, they prefer to have start with signal. And this means that if you set the event to go to start at 10.50, if you go live now, you can leave the camera on and it will be broadcasting and people can watch and then they can arrive early to the stream and they get the same sense as if they arrived early to the church. They arrive five minutes early, they see the view of the church, they can take some time to reflect, maybe do a quick prayer, um, or they can maybe even just take part in, in whatever is happening right there and then. Um, so I'm gonna put start with signal, I'm gonna select next. Now we've spoken about the phone system, and if you select phone system here, then you would select which menu option you want it to go for. So I will select live service, uh, YouTube as well. Uh, and Facebook streaming uh, is not active yet, but it should be active in the next few days. Uh, we are waiting on Facebook to authorize our code, um, which they need to do before we can fully integrate that. Um, and then we also have in-person event uh, attendance. Um, now I will show you an example of this when we create another event. Um, but for now, we'll just do the phone and uh, YouTube, and we're gonna save that. Now, this is the event as you see it within your system here, but every event has a public page. So I'm gonna open up in a new tab up here now. This is the public page, and you can share this on Facebook, you can share this on YouTube, and it carries across all of the details of the phone stream, how people can call in, the YouTube stream, what the link is, and when Facebook is released, then it will have the Facebook link as well. Not only that, when you stream with Faith Online, we can also just stream to here. So when the camera started streaming, you will see a, um, a video feed appearing here, rather than having to send people to Facebook or to YouTube. Again, another way that gives you the flexibility of if you wanted something really closed and private, you would create a private event, don't even select YouTube, and then you just share this page with people and then they can come here and watch the stream on here. Um, also, we said that every organization gets their own calendar page. And again, this is a public page that you can share. You can modify all of these things. This is the name of the organization, small description text, links to whichever websites or things that you have. Uh, and people can see the upcoming events in the calendar view and click through and either watch them or uh, be able to see how to call in, uh, et cetera. Um, now, I'm also going to create uh, another event. Uh, I'm gonna call this attendance. Um, and we're gonna set this one here to be probably at 6 p.m. We'll say 6.50 p.m., that's fine. And ends at 7.05. This is another demo. Uh, and if you have any questions at all here, feel free to jump in at any time. Um, so I'm going to set this one as an in-person event, as well as the phone, why not? We'll do all of them uh, and YouTube. And then here I would set my capacity. So if there's only 10 spaces in the church, I would set the capacity limit as 10. And we can set the registration closes one hour before. And this is in Park Avenue North, London. And then I would click next. You can send an email, which will invite people to this event. It will send them a link to this page and say that they can go here to, uh, to go to view the page. And I'm gonna say, now if I come and I view the public page for this event, remember we have our first event, which is just live streaming. And here we can see phone stream and YouTube. But now we have an event which has attendance. And somebody can then select register for the event. It will ask them for their first name, their phone number and their email address. And if they click register, then within the Faith Online system, then you can come to the attendees tab and you can come and you can see across here, there is one person interested in coming and you can manually approve them. You can move them to the waiting list 
or you can decline them. And this basically allows you to be able to ensure that you have uh, a kind of rolling a list of who comes to the church when. And it shows you their email address and it shows you their phone number uh, and you can create a report uh, based off of this uh, to track who came when or who didn't come. You can alert the congregants, you can send them an email uh, update with their statuses. And once the registration has reached the capacity that we set of uh, 10 attendees, then people will start to be added onto the waiting list. And then again, you can also manually approve them or move them across. Um, so this is a way of being able to do some tracking and tracing for your congregation of who comes. Uh, and of course, after every event, you have some analytics uh, that you can do. Now, um, this is how you create the events, but then we also have the studio uh, functionality in here. And as you can see now, um, before this ends up going into, uh, I'm gonna choose my other camera. Hello, so this is my other camera right now. Um, and you can see all of the hanging things from my main, uh, my main camera. So the studio function will allow you to live stream directly from the browser. So whether you're on a phone or a computer or something else, you can just open this up and you don't need any specific live streaming software or anything else. And you can just go live with the camera that's built into your laptop or into your computer. Um, this is great for, again, impromptu streams or if you don't want to take the time to set up everything uh, and get it working and get it all hard, wired up, etc. Um, or you can connect it to your streaming software. So the streaming software, basically, uh, again, we use industry standard items. You have a server URL and a stream key. And what this means then is that um, if I go live right now with the Mevo camera, um, so I just tapped on the camera down here and I told it to go live. And as we can see now, it's live and it is counting up. Uh, and then within a few seconds, if we come back to the browser here, we should see that the stream is now here and the stream is going live. Um, so we can also watch the stream and make sure that everything is working fine from here. Um, we can see the analytics as well of how long the stream has been going, how many people are watching right now, the likes, dislikes and comments on YouTube, Facebook again coming soon, as well as the dial in attendees um, that are there. So right now there's nobody dialing in because I can't call myself while I'm also talking to myself to myself. Um, but if any of you did want to actually dial this number up here and test this out, then you should hear the uh, audio feed going through uh, right now. And that's it. So again, you can come through, set this up. It's as flexible to work with any system and every system. And as we mentioned on the public pages, there's always the video feed as well that shows up for people. Uh, they don't need to go and watch it on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, I've got to mute this before it gives us some feedback. And this here is the same video feed that's going out to the rest of the world. Um, that is the fundamentals uh, of the Faith Online system. So it allows you to create events, including private events, that you can then share with um, people you can post on your Facebook, you can send in your mailing newsletter, you get your own phone line, which allows you to set up a voice menu system. It does the restreaming between the different platforms on your behalf. Uh, it configures everything on your behalf as well. Um, in fact, if we come up here and we go to the YouTube account, um, we are not actually signed into the correct account here. So give me one second. Um, let's go across to a different browser. Oops, not quite what I wanted to do. There we go. So uh, let me just quickly change across in here. Um, we want to change into Safari. There we go. So now you can see here, uh, we have the one where I'm signed in to the correct account. I'm gonna to go to FO Demo Stream. And if I, uh, do, 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 do. let's go to the YouTube studio. 
And you can see here that uh, if I go to videos, we should see the latest live stream that happened. There we go. So you remember we created one that was called Thursday Demo Webinar Service. Uh, this here is the uh, video and this is the link to it. And you can actually read the description as we put in. The bold text isn't supported in uh, YouTube, but we add on your organization name, we add on your YouTube uh, channel address, your Facebook address, your website. We add in as well if you have a CCLI license number, which you can also configure in the software. And this is the stream as we just did it. Um, so everything works seamlessly. You don't need to go in and do any additional configuration stuff. Um, well, that is interesting, isn't it? Uh, okay, let's see uh, what actually happened with my uh, camera there. Um, how interesting. Uh, give me one second, please. Uh, well, that's, that's a little bit embarrassing. Um, but yeah, um, okay, let's, let's go back to uh, this one here. Um, and then while I try and fix this, um, while I'm trying to fix this, if any of you have any questions, why do I say a question did pop up here? Uh, can this be on more than one computer? Um, is that in reference to the Faith Online software or is that in reference to streaming? Um, if you can clarify that while I quickly repair my camera, uh, since it has decided that um, it's not had the best of days. There we go. Um, so, ah, the Faith Online calendar, it's all web-based. So technically you could open it up on any computer, you could open it up on any phone, you can open it up on a tablet. Uh, if you have a computer plugged into a TV, you can also have a giant TV uh, in a window which shows your up and coming calendar. Um, and any, you can share the calendar link uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter. You can even write the link, uh, you know, on a, on a card or something and post it out to members of your congregation. Um, so that is, uh, everything is possible there. Uh, and it allows you to do everything as much as you need. Um, now, unfortunately, my camera has decided that um, he is not feeling too well. Um, so I will switch back to this other camera now. Sorry about the strange um, in, uh, angle there. Can you input on it? Um, well, let me go back now to the Safari browser here. Okay, so you as the member of Faith Online, you can come to your calendar and you can create any number of new events that you need. Um, we, ha we don't have a limit on the amount of events that you have. Um, and again, this is just open right now, as you can see in the top here, this is just open in a browser. So this is the link, and then you would log into your account. And you can do the same on your phone, you can do the same on your tablet, uh, and you can log in from anywhere and create an event. And likewise, this page here can also be viewed. This is your public calendar page. This here can also be viewed from any device or anything. In fact, what I can do, um, I will go onto my phone and I will open up uh, the, the address up there. So the address for my one is uh, app.faith.online. And then I have forward slash P forward slash Let's go there, forward slash P, forward slash. Would have been easier if I'd copied this across, but um, actually I could do that very quickly. Give me one second. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm just going to send this to myself and then uh, give me one second while I copy this across. My wife will now get a message and she'll probably be wondering what on earth is that, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's go back now to the phone. And if we paste this in here, 
and go. Then as you can see, we can see the, uh, the calendar event uh, as it is here. So we have the up and coming one, which was the one that we created for this Thursday. Uh, and you can see all of the same details. You can see the YouTube links, you can hear the phone menu options. So this isn't a traditional software in terms of you need to install it on a computer. It can be accessed from anywhere uh, and you can uh, configure it from anywhere, wherever you are in the world. You can change devices, you can always modify things, you can use it on a laptop, etc., uh, as and when you need. Uh, Nicola Bone, uh, this has been very interesting, lots to think about, although hard to address the needs of a church just starting out at the same time as a church that already has quite a lot of tech in place. We are at the beginning of the process. So much of this seems quite a bit further on than we are. Uh, Nicholas, very interesting. Um, you don't require any additional tech from this. As we said that um, the microphone system, you get everything that you need to live stream. So the, this can be clipped on. And even if you don't have an audio system, you could still broadcast live. It doesn't need anything additional. It doesn't need any, anything extra. Um, even if you don't have a YouTube or Facebook account, you can still live stream and just share the link to the Faith Online page uh, with members of your congregation. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you need a lot of tech and you need all of the infrastructure there. No, it, just as simple as using your phone and getting the live streaming kit and you can be broadcasting. You don't need anything extra. There's nothing uh, additional needed uh, at all. Um, before we bring this webinar to a close, trying to remain conscious and aware of the time, uh, Nicola, do you have any follow-up questions? Um, while I go through and answer Mary's question, do you allow more than one operator to access the account? Um, right now, uh, Mary, we, are op we have one account per organization, but we are going to be introducing uh, where you can have team members and you can organize things between them. But for now, we uh, simply say that uh, have one account that everybody can log into. And when we have released the additional feature, which will tie in with our donations feature, which are, we are releasing uh, later on this year, and also our meeting rooms feature, which is very similar to Zoom uh, as well, at that point, we will be releasing that you can have multiple people controlling different aspects of the software. Um, so, for example, if you have a treasurer who wants to look after the donation side and you have somebody, for example, who's looking after the community events, then each person can have their own login. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, if any of you have any further questions, uh, I will put my email address in the chat here. Um, and you can feel free to email me or, of course, my colleague uh, Talia. Um, and you can basically email either of us uh, and we will do our best to answer you. But uh, Nicola, if you uh, want to talk about your church and what you guys are currently doing, feel free to reach out. I'm always very interested to uh, ensure that we can provide the best services for anybody. Um, again, this isn't something that's aimed at a specific size of church or, or anything like that. This is designed to work with everyone and help everyone because at the end of the day, when you can provide digital worship services and you can, um, then you are kind of connected to your congregation. And when you can connect with them in such a manner, you can bring them one step closer uh, and continue to build, uh, build up and maintain their faith. So we're very interested to hear as well about what everybody is doing, how you intend to do, um, and what ideas you have. Um, but uh, just looking through here so far, um, what backup support do Faith Online offer? Could you help troubleshoot connection issues? Um, that's a very good question, Jim. So we have, um, if you order the kit, you get a virtual installation um, with myself. So initially there are some training things that you can go through and get things set up uh, yourself. And then we do a half an hour call just to go over any uh, final or any questions which may have appeared or any troubles that you're having. And then over the coming weeks, as you live stream, any troubles or anything that you have, you email us and we help guide you through. We have had customers who um, their audio levels were quite low. So we uh, worked with them to bring up the audio levels and everything. There were other customers who had a very old audio sound system uh, in their church. And so we helped them to find the best value uh, 
system that they can use that won't get, you know cost 120 pounds but it upgraded their whole audio system inside the church and on the live streams as well um, so we are there to help you and support you and build yeah, build you up um, Nicholas saying helpful to know there is support one of our issues is very elderly congregation so no help is with tech stuff that's not an that's not a problem at all so the phone system is is the best way um, for a lot of uh, congregations who have generally uh, elderly members. And it's because the phone system is something that they know and they are used to. From any phone, landline, from a mobile phone, they pick up, they dial your dedicated number, they will hear all of your messages from your church, they can call up at any time, they know that on Sundays at 9 a.m. you're going to be going live, so they can tune in and they can phone up and they can listen in. Um, they, if they have a speaker phone, they can put you on speaker and play you throughout the house. Um, so it's completely flexible, um, you know, and it's it's a beautiful way as well. It's not just digital worship isn't just about, oh, right now we have COVID, so we have to do something. No, even going down the line further, there's always members of the congregation who are unable to attend. There could be a single mother who has four children and she can't handle the children being in the church at the same time. So she hasn't come for a few months. But if she's at home, she can still have the children doing something where she tunes in herself on her phone or on her laptop. There could be somebody who's suffering from an injury and is currently recovering and they can't walk the 200 meters to the church. They can also tune in. And these are things that don't just happen once in a lifetime. These are things that are always happening and always affect the congregations. So by offering the, the addition, these are all additional to the core service of the church. Again, you can really allow your congregation to tune in and stay connected with you uh, over the years and whatever anybody may face, there's always a way for them to stay connected with the church. Um, I think there may be one last final question. Ah, there we go. <laughs> with COVID restrictions, if the camera is set up in church, can it be managed remotely? Um, that is an interesting question. We did have this question from a few people um, who were asking us whether this could be done. Um, because the system is so simple in that um, you take the camera out, you put it on the tripod, you open up an app and you tap a red button. Um, again, this is, I'll show you exactly here. Um, open up the app and wait for the app to connect to the camera and then just tap the red button, tap the destination, and tap go live. So it's very, very simple in that you don't need somebody dedicated to managing. You don't need somebody dedicated to set things up. Um, it can be very easily done by almost anybody, but if you did want to, uh, you could find a way to remotely control the phone. Um, this is something that we haven't tested ourselves, but um, there is maybe a way that you could remotely control the phone that's doing the streaming and thus, therefore, then you can remotely control the full system. But it will still require somebody to switch it on. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of possibilities. And again, it's ultimate flexibility uh, in the system. Um, and it's designed to work with you. And we are here to, to help you uh, get streaming. Um, and that's it. So does anybody else have any other questions? Um, or is that it? Uh, again, we'll take a couple more, maybe late last minute questions um, before we bring this to a close. Um, and if you do think of any questions later on, feel free to reach out to myself, omar at faithonline.co.uk, or my colleague Talia, um, talia at faithonline.co.uk. Um, we do have a document, a proposal document prepared, which allows you to get a full summary of the kit what it will do, um, and it's a document that's what we like to call PCC friendly. Um, so when you come to have your PCC meetings, then this document will show exactly what you will get, exactly what's included, exactly what everything costs, exactly what, who, why, when, where, how. Um, so it's a great summary document uh, for you. Um, and other than that, uh, I'm going to say thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time, uh, and I wish you all a blessed week. And uh, I hope that you can begin to live stream or continue on with your live stream and allowing all the members of your congregation to reach you um, even better. That's it from myself. 
Take care. We'll see you next time.